السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam We wanted to continue this beautiful series on the remembrances of the morning and the evening because these are the ones that are going to protect us from every evil and every harm. And we ask Allah to make us of those who remember Him at these times and we earn His protection and His mercy and His love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ حِينَ تُمْسُونَ وَحِينَ تُصْبِحُونَ Allah says what means so exalted is Allah when you reach the evening and when you reach the morning. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا وَسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا O you who have believed and we ask Allah to make us from the mu'mineen, from the believers, I mean, remember Allah with much remembrance and exalt Him in the morning and in the evening. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, from these great remembrances and reminders, and again, you can find this sheet that's on the screen on www.icomantika.org uh, under the remembrances of the morning and the evening. It'll be on the left-hand side of the screen and you can print it, inshallah. Um, but what you're seeing here is Ayat al-Kursi. And definitely, we see many virtues on it, as you can see on the screen. And we're going to break it down with a brief tafsir, especially this being the month of the Qur'an, the month of Ramadan. May Allah allow us to reap its reward and learn His words, His books, which were revealed in this month. We have an authentic hadith from the Prophet wasallam, where he said, مَنْ قَرَأَ آيَةَ الْكُرْسِ دُبَرَ كُلِّ صَلَاةِ قُدْ دُبَرِ كُلَّ صَلَاةٍ مَكْتُوبَةٍ لَمْ يَمْنَعْهُ مِنْ دُخُولِ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَمُوتِ And the Prophet Sallallahu he said in this authentic hadith, uh, according to Shaykh Al-Albani, he said, whoever recites the verse of the throne or ayat al-kursi, and the kursi, we're going to get into that, the arsh is really the throne, but whoever recites ayat al-kursi, after, he, after every prescribed prayer, there will be nothing standing between him or her, and their entry into paradise, but death, meaning the fact that they're still living. And our Prophet ﷺ, he said in another authentic hadith that we find uh, in Al-Hakim and Shaykh Al-Albani, he graded it as authentic. He said, whoever says this when he rises in the morning, they will be protected from the jinn until he retires in the evening. And whoever says it when they retire in the evening it will be protected from the, they will be protected from the jinn until they rise in the morning so here in, in this ayah we have a great virtues one read them after every fard prayer after fajr dhuhr asr maghrib and isha read ayat al kursi and you introduce it with a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim because it's in the middle of a surah there's no need to say bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim you just introduce it with um, the seeking refuge with Allah from shaitan and the other benefit to read it in the morning and in the evening so that you are protected from jinn during those times again the reward for saying it after every fard prayer you'll be given Jannah and the only thing not letting you go to it now is the fact that you're still alive in this surah is the greatest names of Allah al Hay, al Qayyum, al Ali, al Azim, and there's a Difference of opinion as to which names are the greatest. Some say it is al Hayy al Qayyum. Some say that all of the names are great. Some say that all four of these are from the greatest names. Uh, wallahu a'lam. This ayah is a protection for you and your family from jinn and shayateen. And our Prophet ﷺ, he said, It is a'dhumu ayah fil Quran. It is the greatest ayah, the greatest ayah in the Quran. So, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us briefly go over this ayah, the ayat al-kursi. And again, this is the month of Ramadan, the month in which it, the Qur'an was revealed. Hudan lil-nas wa bayyinatin min al-huda wal-furqan. As a guidance for mankind and clear proofs for the guidance and the criteria between right and wrong. So we know, again, from this, the great benefit of it. We know the hadith from Ubayy ibn Ka'b where he had a harvest of dates that shrunk every day and he watched 
at night why this heap was was shrinking and he noticed a beast that looked like a, a boy who had attained puberty he gave it salams and it responded with salam and in this one when it responded with salam uh, he said to him are you a jinn or a human so he replied i'm a jinn he said show me your hand and he showed the hand and it had a, a lot of hair on it kind of like the the dog fur covering it he said is this how all jinn are like he said all jinn know that there is none amongst them stronger than me he was asked what brought you here he said we were told you or bay you love to give charity so we came to get some food because we know the jinn yani they eat what would protect us from you he said this ayah from surah al-baqarah ayat al-kursi whoever says it in the morning will be protected until the evening and whoever says it in the evening will be protected until the morning in the morning Ubay radiyallahu anhu he came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and told him of the incident and he told him the evil one has said the truth and this hadith is in Sunan Nasa'i and Shaykh al-Albani he authenticated it again Shaykh al-Albani he authenticated it we know my brothers and sisters again this is the greatest ayah and we have that in the hadith from Ubay ibn Ka'b again uh, Abu al-Mundhir who was يعني asked by the Prophet صلى الله تدري أي آية من كتاب الله معك أعظم قال قلت الله ورسوله أعلم قلت الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم قال فضرب في صدري وقال والله ليهنك العلم أبا المنذر in the authentic hadith we just mentioned this in Sahih Muslim أبا المنذر who is Ubay ibn Ka'am he said uh, he was asked by the Prophet Sallallahu Do you know the ayah from the Book of Allah Which according w- يعني, is the greatest Ubay he said Allah and his messenger know best So again he was asked the question So Ubay said Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al qayyum And so upon that The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam struck him on his chest And said may knowledge give you joy O Abu al-Mundhir Affirming that he was correct in saying that it was Ayat al-Kursi. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, quickly let us يعني, review this ayah. Allah. Allah is the title exclusive only to Allah, to Him. None other than Allah, whether in Jahiliyyah times or other times, or in the times of Islam, was given the name Allah. Allah is the exclusive title for Rabb al the Lord of the heavens and the earth. So the first hukm, the first judgment, that we have Allahu la ilaha illa hu. This is an absolute negation of true divinity except to Allah. Ilah means the ma'lu, the one who was worshipped out of love and magnification. La is a negative, it negates that. La ilaha, this is pure, clear, comprehensive negation of all sorts, of all false gods. Illa hu. Except for Him, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجْهَهُ لَهُ الْحُكْمُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Allah says in Surah Al-Qasas, what means and invoke not any other ilah, any other god along with Allah, none has the right to be worshipped but him. Everything will perish except for his face. His is the decision and to him all of you will be returned. Al-Hay Al-Qayyum Al-Hay Al-Qayyum First we note the prefix of Al, the Alif and the Lam. This is a particle of determination, of specification. And it's, com- it's, it's a combination of all perfection. al hayyul Al-Qayyum, only Allah is perfect in His attributes. The one who possess, per- possesses perfect living and has perfection of His actions. Man's life is imperfect. It begins and ends. There's non-existence in the, presence, in the present world. Yani, yani, you will live, you will die. al hay He does not die. وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتِ Allah says in Surah Al-Furqan what means and put your trust and reliance upon the one who is ever living who does not die. 
Therefore, Allah has endless existence. There was nothing before Him. There will be uh, yani nothing after Him. He is the first. He is the last. Al-Qayyum, He is established on His own. He is self-subsisting, by whom all other things subsist. He is free of all need. He does not need food. He does not need drink. He does not need sleep. He does not get tired. He does not need to use the restroom. He needs no supporter, no helper, no protector. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in tansurullah yansurukum. So when we hear the ayah in Surah Muhammad, O you who believe, if you help Allah, Allah will help you. This does not mean that Allah needs help. Billah. Allah does not need any help. It refers to helping in the cause of Allah's deen. And if you do so, then Allah will support you and aid you and protect you. Allah is fully in charge of everything. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم Neither slumber nor sleep overtakes Allah. Sleep contradicts perfection. We as humans sleep. Animals, they sleep. No one is perfect except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no need for Allah even after He created the heavens and the earth in six days. He ascended above His throne in a manner which suits His majesty. He did not need to rest. He was not tired because He created it in six days. He could have done it in one second had He chosen. So Allah does not need to sleep because this implies, imper- uh, this implies imperfection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. Sleep comes to discontinue hardness, uh, hardship or tiredness. So if Allah slept, it would mean He needed rest. And Allah is above needing rest or sleep or food or drink or nourishment or any of those things. وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ subata. Sleep was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us as a thing for rest. And He is free from needing it. So it's impossible that the one free of all imperfections sleeps. And our Prophet ﷺ, he said, in Sahih Muslim, you'll find this hadith, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنَامُ وَلَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُ أَنْ يَنَامُ Verily, Allah does not sleep, and it does not befit Him to sleep. We should note here, my brothers and sisters in Islam, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what means there is nothing comparable to Allah. There is nothing comparable to Allah. You cannot compare a human to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a jinn to Allah or anything else to Allah. Allah is not comparable to anything. Uh, nothing, afwan, no one or nothing is comparable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the all hearing, the all seeing. There is nothing like unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. The heavens here is listed as plural, there being the seven heavens. Allah is the one who masters the affairs of everything in existence, in the heavens and the earth. He creates, He's the sovereign one, the king. He manages all the affairs. He dictates and commands what should happen to Allah alone. Lahuma, purely to Him alone, is whatever in the heavens and the earth. Everything between the heavens and the earth. In it, on it, above it, whatever you want to way you want to look at it, it all belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are Allah's possession. We belong to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong indeed we belong to Allah, and to him will be our return. Man the yashfa'u indahu illa bi idni. Who is it that can intercede with Allah except with his permission with his permission? This intercession, shafa'a, linguistically, it means to make an odd number even, like we see in Surah Al-Fajr, Wal-Fajr Ashir, right? Traditionally, it's laying a petition with someone in favor of another to get a benefit or to ward off harm. And this is the shafa'a that we're talking about with respect to the deen. Intercession to ward off harm. Ahl, Ahlul Mawqif, the, all the, the people standing gathered on one plane on the day of resurrection, then grouping behind the prophets that they followed, or uh, yani if, they, if they followed them, and may Allah make us from the followers of Muhammad, وسلم, awaiting for that count from Allah. 
The Prophet ﷺ, he said, the sun will come so close to the people that they will suffer distress and trouble as they will not be able to tolerate it or to bear it. And we seek Allah's help and aid, Allah's shade and protection on the day where there's no shade except for Allah's shade. In the day which is 50,000 years long. So this intercession of benefit is for Ahlul Jannah, for the people to be entered into Jannah. And even the Prophet ﷺ, he will need the permission of Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ will seek the permission of Allah and make sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not lift his head up until Allah commands him. And he will be granted it after he prostrates and praises Allah with great praises. praises. Then it will be said to him, Irfa' ra'saka wa qul yasma' wa shafa' to shafa'. It will be said, O Muhammad, وسلم, now raise your head and speak. You will be listened to, intercede, and your intercession will be accepted. So there's some shafa' exclusive for the Prophet وسلم, only. And these Intercessions, for example, are for Ahl al mawqif that all the people looking for intercession, they're going to their prophets. So the Prophet ﷺ will be able to intercede for his ummah. And all the people will go to the prophets that they followed and be grouped with them and seek intercession. For Ahl al-Jannah, to enter Jannah, asking the gates to be opened for Jannah to be open for the people to be admitted. This is uh, an intercession allowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reduce the punishment of Abu Talib. This is a specific intercession given to the Prophet sallallahu because he protected the Prophet sallallahu but he didn't enter Islam before he died. And so he will be interceded for by the Prophet sallallahu on the day of judgment and he will be given a punishment forever in the hellfire and it will be what's considered the lightest one. But this is wearing some type of footwear or sandals that will uh, ca- uh, on the a- around the ankles that will cause the brain to boil from its heat and punishment. Then there are those shafa'a not restricted to the Prophet, uh, to not cast into hell one who doesn't deserve it, taking out of Jahannam those admitted by sins to raise the ranks of the believers. These aren't restricted to a Prophet وسلم, and these are intercessions, but all of this will not be allowed without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has to give his permission and be pleased with it and accept it and uh, approve of that shafa'a. يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ Allah knows what happens to his creatures in this world and what will happen to them in the hereafter. لَا يَضِلُّ رَبِّي وَلَا يَنْسَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what means uh, my Rabb, my Lord, is neither unaware nor does he forget. So Allah, he knows what happens to his creatures in this world and what will happen to them in the hereafter. And they will never come and uh, encompass anything of Allah's knowledge except that which Allah wills. Future, past, whatever it may be, even the present, we don't know. Yeah, I mean, we're in the present, but we don't know what's one minute in the future even. We don't know anything about Allah except what Allah has willed for us to know. And we don't know what Allah knows except what He wills for us to know. Uh, again, you can say of science and all this. Look at all those things that Allah knew fully about that we just find out here and there as time goes on by Allah's permission. His that, sifat, his asma, his actions, none of this we know until Allah allows us to know it. Allah's kursi extends over the heavens and the earth, encompassing them all. He feels no fatigue in guarding them or preserving them. So his kursi, and we're going to explain that here, extends over the heavens and the earth, encompassing them all. Allah is separate from His creation. This kursi and then the arsh that's on top of the kursi, and Allah, but this is all separate from the creation of the heavens and the earth. Okay? Allah is above all of this. He feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving them. Allah gets no fatigue in having to preserve this whole world and the universe, not just what we see, even what beyond what we don't see. And He is the Most High and the Most Great. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, we should know here that the kursi, according to some of the, the, the ulama, is the mawda' 
القدمين, the footstool, the place where the feet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, rest, and it is before the arsh, uh, li- like a front to it. According, This is according to Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Al-Qayyim, and Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah. Again, there are some who disagree with this, but we know for sure the kursi is different than the arsh. Okay, the kursi is not the arsh, and the arsh is not the kursi. The arsh is greater and more spacious and more profound, and that is the actual throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the kursi is not his knowledge. Uh, some people uh, yani, say that there is something that refers to that. Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Albani, uh, rahimahumullahi ta'ala, they have said that this is da'if, this is a, a, um, not an authentic um, narration or thought and the kursi is not referring to Allah's knowledge it is an actual uh, uh, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we see in the hadith from uh, uh, Abu Dhar um, and we find this report in the uh, collections of Ibn Abi Shayba and Al-Bayhaqi and Shaykh Al-Albani he authenticated it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said ma as samawat as sab' wal ardun as sab' عند الكرسي إلا كحلق إلا كحلقة ملقاة بأرض فلات وإن فضل العرش على الكرسي كفضل الفلات على تلك الحلقة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in this hadith which we again we said Sheikh Al Bani he authenticated it. He said the seven heavens and seven earths by the side of the kursi are not but as a ring thrown down in the desert. And such is the kursi with respect to the arsh. So this shows the vastness of the immense creations with respect to al-ghayb, to the unseen. My brothers and sisters in Islam, again, what this means is that you have the seven heavens and the earth and all that is created. And above that all is the kursi of Allah, which is according to some, as we said, mawda al-qadamain, the footstool, of the uh, of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and then the arsh is a, is uh, yani larger than that. So what was said in this narration was the seven heavens and the earths by the side of al kursi are not but like a ring thrown down in the desert land. So the kursi is like the vastness of a desert where you would see that the seven heavens and the earth that we think are so grand and it takes millions of, uh, not many millions, but it takes many, many years um, uh, to get to a certain area of what we know to be even in space and all this and stuff. That All of that is like a ring thrown in the desert. So even though it's so vast to us in terms of the skies and the, the, the earth and the solar system, all of that creation compared to the kursi is like a ring compared to a desert. And then the kursi compared to the arsh, the footstool of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compared to his throne, the footstool that we just said was grander than the, the heavens and the earth by the narration of uh, comparing it to a ring in the desert. Now that kursi is like that ring and that desert's vastness is like the arsh or the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Our Lord is definitely most great and most high, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, وَإِذَا الْأَرْضُ مُدَّتْ In this ayah, we su- see the support for the scholarly uh, view that the heavens and the earth are all spherical shapes. Uh, Allah said in the one we just mentioned, and when the earth is stretched forth. <clears throat> so, we should know that uh, uh, Al-Kursi is wound round in a round form extending over the heavens and the earth. And the Arsh, the Prophet Wasallam, he related to us, it is like a dome above the heavens, round but neither fully spherical or flat. And of course, these are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and we're not to necessarily uh, go overboard in thinking about them. We take what we've been giving of knowledge and we stop at that. We know to ask for Al-Firdaus. It is the middle and the highest part of Al-Jannah. And at the top of Al-Firdaus Al-A'la, Allahumma ja'alna min uh, Ashab Ahl Al-Jannah, uh, Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. May Allah make us from the inhabitants of the highest Al-Firdaus Al-A'la, part of Jannah. At the top of it is the Arsh of Ar-Rahman, 
and we have this an authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari that the top of uh, al-Firdaus al-A'la is the bottom of the Arsh of al-Rahman and from it gushes forth the rivers of Jannah. So al-Arsh is the roof of al-Firdaus. It's the roof of al-Firdaus, the highest of Jannah, the middle and highest part of Jannah from which the rivers of Jannah flow. Imam al-Barbahari in Sharh al-Sunnah, he said that paradise is in the seventh uh, sky or heaven so he feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving them and he Allah is the most high the most great absolute transcendence and for Allah is the highest description and the best description no one is worthy of anything even remotely close to it Allah is above everything he is not everywhere uh, he is everywhere with his knowledge that he knows where everything is happening, everything that's existing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically stawa ala al-arsh, thumma stawa ala al-arsh, and he ascended above his throne in a manner which suits his majesty. Sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means, and make tasbih, declare Allah is far removed above all imperfection of your Lord, the Most High above everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ended with mentioning uh, that all things ascend up to him. That the angels and the ruh, Jibreel alayhi salam, they ascend up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And things that descend from him. Allah says what means verily we it is we who have sent down the dhikr of course some things descend down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his permission so this is a clear response to those who say that Allah is everywhere uh, in addition to the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked a slave girl Ain Allah where is Allah and she said above the heavens so he sallallahu alaihi wasallam after then affirming that he was uh, that she affirmed that he was the messenger of Allah sallallahu he said a'tiqaha fa innaha mu'mina grant her freedom because she is a believer al ali al azim the most great the absolute perfect in greatness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we see these five names of Allah mentioned Allah al hayy al qayyum al ali al azim the uluhiyya is present none has the right to be worshiped but Allah that he is self-sustained he does not need anyone or anything to continue to sustain all that we see look at us subhanahu wa ta'ala we can barely handle our lives and instead of imagine handling the whole universe and the world and the jinn and the mankind and the angels etc the ayah contains from the greatest names of Allah the perfection of Allah is definitely clarified in this ayah and everyone else uh, is far, far lower, especially in knowledge and intercession, etc. And my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we see Allah affirm that intercession will be approved if approved by Allah. And that Allah's ilm, past, present, future is definitely uh, there. Yani he has the qadr, the qadr, the divine pre-decree that Allah knows even what's going to happen before we know that it's going to happen. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in a very quick nutshell... Uh, we explain this ayah, read it after every fard prayer so that nothing prevents you from Jannah except for the fact that you're still living and read it in the morning and the evening so that you'll be protected from the jinn and the shayateen. If you recite it in the morning, you'll be protected till the evening. If you recite it in the evening, you'll be protected in the morning. I ask Allah to grant us benefit and to make us recite this after every fard prayer and in the morning and in the evening and to grant us protection from every evil and harm. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu